What's up, YouTube? This is what Trey Gomez, guys. Today, how about you have green? Then on the market, guys, hope you guys are really close this day with super, super green. And all of you guys that have been watching my videos, guys, all of you guys that just watched the video that I just dropped not too long ago, guys, should be on the green, huge green. So let me kind of recap really quick what that I talk about was BRDN. The stock that I really went over it, and I told you guys how not only had positive data, had great momentum, had great you know, risk reward, uh, had great movers, you know, had great um, uh, you know, uh, momentum, like you know, levels that they could actually break out. Look the move that we actually did. I have literally put it to you guys, and this is why once again, you don't want to miss because I alert this to my students super early. That was even before I actually made the video at 1624. This was selected at 10.32. You can see time stamp it. I told my students, they did, did, did every single thing that they need to know and when I was getting it. Since then, we I was updating with them. Like, this is what I do step by step, all my trades when I do, getting in, getting out. And, you know, what they're supposed to do, we, the, all the guidance is very important, right? This is what we talk about for beginners. You know, guidance is the most important thing because you need to know what you're doing. You need learning. So, obviously, you need to know what's going on. So BRDN actually ended up playing very nice. You know, we got 16.95, 17, keep moving up very nice. And look what he ended up going today, guys. Almost, almost, almost nineteen dollars. Well, eighteen. We were short two pennies, but from the sixteen to almost nineteen, that's almost two, three dollars move. Great, great gains. Only one trade, right? And this is what I said. Only it matters quality of trades instead of quantity. Great setup, guys. And I still believe that's huge potential, right? But like I said, that doesn't mean that you're not taking profits, guys. So regardless, of that always secure some profits out. You know, leave some runners. Do whatever you got to do. But I think that. This could potentially keep running this. This could be, like I said, possible bearer. Remember, nothing is warranty. Market can just do anything. But obviously, this already pay us. So we are on the green. We're going to stay green, okay? Now, really quick, guys. Once again, if you want to be part of the community, you know what to do, guys. Join up. You know, link is going to be in the description, guys. And that's how you're going to be able to join. And again, I extended only for tonight. It's going to be the last day for the week. Good trial. If you want to join for the week and you want to take the trial, that's fine. You can do it. That's the code right there in front of your screens. Or again, again, I, I still most people actually, you know, they just join the whole month because it's cheaper anyways. Uh, but again, that's actually the best thing to do. This is where I'm here 24-7, my guidance, live training, you know, live sessions, classes, educational content, my trace 24-7, you know, everything is going to be here, guys. So I'm waiting for you guys. All right. Now, kind of jumping in really quick in tomorrow because we have uh, a very busy day. And I do have a couple setups that I want to discuss to you guys late, later. Uh, but tomorrow, guys, we got CPI. I mean, CPI is one of the most important reports as well on the market. I mean, we have a very busy week. I mean, we have debate. Uh, we got PPI. Then we next we have FMC meeting. Possible, possible, you know, card raise. I doubt it, but you never know it's gonna happen. So remember that today we have like a little very volatile day because we have a big flush down. We have a big reversal. So tells you how the uh, the buyers and the sellers are just you know, moving their money up and down. Right, so tomorrow in the morning, as you guys know, a CPI coming out at 8 30. So, again, we either going to have a big rip, you know, big spike, or we're going to have a big drop depending on the data. Whatever it is, you definitely want to just wait and observe the price action. Don't gamble, don't guess, you know, don't don't just let the price action do its thing. And once it does that, then you decide what to do, right? Like I said, you know, you beginners, please, you know, just give it the market like 15 30 minutes. Right, let the market settle down, right? Let the market digest the numbers and then you're gonna to decide to go. But all right, and then you can take a trade. And again, this is what we're here for. You can always ask questions, we're gonna help you out. But again, and we have crazy trades, guys. There's one trade today that I actually went out had a highlight that it was alerted on my scanners. And this is one of the things that I have one of my scanners active here in the Alpha community. That's another benefit for you know people that have small accounts. You know, we trade penny stocks a lot, you know, small caps. I mean, let me see this stock in particular came out on our scanners. And it was for 40 cents, guys. I mean, it ended up being like 30 cents. I mean, it's still running after that. It's crazy, man. This stock is actually went ballistic. Look at this, man. Our pre-market was at 30 cents. And they want to make a 40, 34, 30 cents in the morning. And whole day run, entire day run this thing. 30 cents. Look at right now, it's almost at 2.71 high. It's from 40 cents, guys. That's almost 300, 400% return if you bought right there and you held. And as you can see, right, it never broke the trend, really. I mean, it did shortly. Around three o'clock, retest 80 cents and then just rip off all the way up. So crazy gains, man. This is why I do love penny stocks because you know you can do much, much gains and options, and then you obviously have a, a less risk, you know, relative to, to what options are because options are leveraged. So again, this is why it's great to you know build small accounts instead of gamble your money because they share shares are always gonna be there. Nobody's gonna take you out, shares don't expire. 
right? Options they do. And if you, cho you choose the wrong expiration date, you choose the wrong strike and you might be screwed and you can actually, you know, get, get, you know, uh, you know, uh, IB crash for days. You can, you know, the grids can eat you really quick. So there are a lot of downside playing options. If you don't know what you're doing. Right. But again, we have a crazy day as well. You know, the options levels play out pretty nice. And again, this is why it's important to respect the levels. This is one as well as important to respect the trend because that is really what it matters when you're trading stocks. And whether you're still in a stocks or options, levels matter. So this morning we have a SPY 548.80 for calls and 546 for puts. Going back to uh, SPY, and I'll just, let me just bring it out. We can see how we actually trade this morning, right? There was no reason whatsoever you took some calls because there was no direction for calls. The first part of the morning, I would probably say from like 9.30 to like 11.30, the direction was very choppy. I mean, you, even though we're below the EMAs, the direction was super, super choppy. That trade that happened from here to here, that was the only trade that you could have checked, in my opinion, because that was a solid trend. The reversal, that was the exact same thing. I don't usually take trades after like, you know, special options after like one o'clock, right? But anybody could have done it. And the same, you have the bars, you have the trend, you got the reclaim will be well. So you have the possibility to take the trade. But at the end of the day, guys, the levels matter because this morning I had 546 for puts. And as you see, once we ended up breaking below the 20 mate with sellers, we had a drop to 543. So $2 dollar move for our levels. Plenty of money to be made, right? Not being greedy, just taking that green that the market gives you. And that's it, moving on to the next one, right? Now, what I'm expecting for tomorrow, this is important to know. Uh, we talk about this one, right? We talk about how the market is just not looking, it's not looking good, right? But we are just talking from a technical perspective. At the end of the day, things can change. Things can just really swap tomorrow. Things can spike, right? But in my opinion, I still believe that we have more downside, right? I mean, we can potentially just, the market's way inflated for me to believe that, you know, we are going to go out the highs. But regardless, anything is possible. You know, just keep that in mind. I'm just, in my mind, I think that, you know, we have to uh, cool down more. But that doesn't mean that the market can just reverse, can you can just you know break out and go back into previous highs. Again, we have all important data. We got a lot of things happening, so anything can really happen. But regardless, we are still below the EMA. So for now, we're technically bearish, right? Unless we break out the 20 EMA and we start closing above, then I'll still wouldn't change my perspective. But it's possible. I mean, it's very, very possible that we can break out and go higher, right? So tomorrow, that's kind of what I'm looking at because you see we're below the 200 EMA. So if we break 549s, the thing that is going to lead out to, to a possible retail of 550s, take a like a level, and then we might go to 560s, probably 560s, 555s. So that's kind of what I'm looking at if it happens. If it doesn't happen and we actually reject the, you know, the, the trend line, then we can probably get back back down retail 545s. We might be in the 540s. And again, if the trend is strong, we even might just start breaking out again, again, to like the near the, the 200 may. So we're going to have to keep an eye on this one. Tesla. Very interesting today. And, you know, we have a big, big, big drop, but we have the curl up, right? We actually see the selling pressure decreasing today. And I was looking for that small spike. So we like, we had 220 for calls, 218 for puts, right? We actually go look Tesla and Tesla ended up playing out very interesting this morning, right? We did have that, that breakout that we were looking for to 226.40, right? That part of the morning, that was it. Like I said, you take the trade, one of the levels, and then you can move on to the next one, right? Ended up pretty good. Ended up reversing like the market did. So then a couple of trades that could have been made on this on this specific price action. But again, it's all about learning not to overtrade, right? I would I wouldn't overtrade with this, anyways. Now looking at the perspective on this, there are really uh there's still bars, right? Today candle closing over the EMAs, it is still bullish, right? Because we have bars increasing as you can see here on the daily chart, suggesting that we could have more upside, right? Again, there is it is there is a chance that if this momentum still goes, we can go back and kind of like go for that fair value gap around like you know 232s. So right now we are 225s, right? We need to break that 226.72, uh, and then we might open up to the next resistance that is currently sitting at 235.68, right? And we'll see how that plays with 231 as well. So if not, we actually you know have a not continuation tomorrow, then if we do lose the small trend lines, these small EMAs, right, the 20 EMA, and we start breaking out again. So the 223.86 breaks down, then we might lead us to possible retest around 220s, 219s. It's very possible because we retest those previous lows, right, and kind of like grab some liquidity if it really wants to, to break out again, right? But again, for now, it seems to is looking bullish, right? But again, nothing, anything can just really change tomorrow. So this is what we actually update every single day. 
And this is what I actually do, guys. I offer Tesla and NVIDIA and any other option, option stocks on the Alpha community as well that I can review. We can actually talk about, discuss, and find plays on this only on the private. So when you want to be part of the team, guys, once again, join up. Link is going to be in the description, guys. First comment. I hope to see you guys here. And now to kind of finish with NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA, really, it's another stock that's been paying pretty good, only about learning the levels, right? Learning what is it doing. This morning, I put to my students that it was literally tapping the same level. And it seemed that it was, you know, it, it, the way that it was setting up on pre-market was, was literally towards going to that resistance. And that's exactly what it did, right? We had that 109.72 resistance. Uh, we were looking 108 for calls, 106 for puts. And look what it ended up doing. Uh, NVIDIA, right? It opened in market and then it had a quick spike right there to resistance. But of course, you know, it didn't have confirmation, never closed above. You got sellers and then flushing out and that was a trade, right? That break down to the trade. Again, we did have levels, the 106 for puts based on the 60MA. So once we actually broke them properly, that was a short move. That was a move that we were waiting for. And again, that was more than enough, right? And then if you see, we kind of close to where we open, right? So it's kind of like we didn't do anything. Um, Looking at the daily chart, we are a similar situation with SPY. I mean, we have a small technical bounce based on support, uh, but uh, there's still chances that we can reject. There's still chances that we can keep going lower. I still believe that, again, all AI, all technology sector is still inflated, uh, and I still believe they have more, could be more downside. But again, data can change everything, and this is why it's important to just read it and see what's going on, right? See how the presentation reacts to it, okay? But again, for tomorrow, what I'm looking for in media is that you see we're in that range uh, considering that we're trading on that same rejection area that's what it makes me look bearish but anything can happen right so ideally we're sitting around at 107 so for tomorrow guys if we break that 108.73 which is the 200 may we might go for previous highs right we might retest that resistance that we've been talking about uh, a previous rejection area right if not and if we actually you know break down for x y reasons if we lose the 20 EMA that is currently at 107.30, we might about go down to retest previous lows, which is around 105, mostly because that's the area of accumulation that it had before and today's intraday lows, right? So just keep that one in mind. And today, guys, I have a couple of stocks that I want to mention. Really, it's very, very important to know. We talk about last night, we talk about, you know, how IMBS still have potential and they did, right? Today had a great move, guys. I mean, this showed me how buyers are still present. We ended up going from 170s to 220s. Great move, great move for real. Uh, obviously, again, this is going to take some time, right? I do believe that this company is doing great. I mean, I know this company. I mean, I've trained it several times and it's, it's been a, it's been a known squeezer, but you have to let it set up present itself, right? So today, today's candle, I mean, you can see we have the buying pressure increasing and technically we are having a, a inside a bar, right? Could be, I wouldn't call it a dodgy yet because the body is a little, is, is bigger, but that could be actually an inside bar. Closing in between that, the previous body. So if that really happens, if this is the trend that remains and you start consolidating on this what, $2, right? We start breaking out. There's a chance that we can go higher at around 2 3 But remember, the average size was 73s. Weekly is still at 40s. And I still, like I said, even though we have sellers, um, the news are pretty good. So we have to let it play out and let it show us what to do. Remember, this is only 3 million fold, guys. I mean, this can really do what it did before to 320, one day, snap out, and just go crazy. Right. And now the other stuff that I'm liking is gonna tell you this L A I L E. Right. This one is actually getting my attention. And one of the reasons is because not only has a good risk reward. So this company in particular, it was not too long ago sitting at around ten dollars, right? This is like the last couple of months. It got huge, huge beat down, right? Because there was some sort of uh, accusations, allegations that this was hugely manipulated by short sellers. And what's happening is that the CEO, right? He's actually come up and you know came up in the front and he's like, you know what? He's then kind of correcting those mistakes that they were supposedly made by the short sellers. So he's and the the company seems to be pretty solid, right? They have he got a long standing track record out of the financials, great financials, and they have a deliberate significant innovation on AI for enterprise learning and work automation. So I did look onto their uh you know what they do and it seems to be doing pretty good. I mean they don't seem to to be something that like that not being used right now. I did look into the holdings and what I found out, and this is something similar, you see how many people was holding BRDN? Similar to what I find out, like this is a lot of this not too long ago because they, the latest purchase, uh, the latest the buyers came out in August and July. And then let me say, this is a quite amount. I mean, we're talking about 
hundreds of thousands, even millions of positions that they have been holding around. This is, tell me, this is what I'm bullish on is because these people, they're holding good amount of shares. And the reason they do it is because they do have, they do believe in the company. They do believe in on the potential, right? Now, what I'll do like about this one is the risk reward. Today, candle has a huge candle. This could be a potential reversal, right? They haven't seen this influx bottom in a while. And there's no coincidence that actually today, if you notice, it ran up straight to the start of the gap, right? The start of the gap goes from 1.75 to 2.96. That could be a continuation for tomorrow. And again, and you never know, this is sitting at like 29 million float. It's not even a lot, right? I mean, realistically, there is a, there is a second gap uh, that goes all the way up to like 3.84 to 5.57. But that was the, if we're talking a realistic, uh, you know, area, I think that is very chill that we can go to $2, $3 if the momentum remains. I mean, the volume was today's 81 million. That was a crazy amount of volume, right? Compared to the average volume. So I will keep a definite eye on this. I mean, it seems to be setting up. We have a potential, you know, uh, send the triangle forming right now. But like I said, it's not coincidence. That foot hour chart seems to as well, look, you know, setting up pretty nice. But we're going to have to see how it performs tomorrow, right? Right now, it seems to be holding the trend pretty good. Some accumulation. So again, it's all about how things are going to react tomorrow. And again, you are going to be ready to play out. Okay, so any guys, anything else, just let me know. You know, just drop a comment in the video, guys. And again, if you'll be making money with the BRDN and other setups, you know what to do, guys. Like and subscribe to the channel, guys, because we have more stocks. Again, you, you never know when I'm going to drop another bar, because we've been making bangers out there. So if you want anything else, I hope to see you guys in the community, guys. Join up. Again, link is given in the description. And again, last day. For anybody really that wants to to use the uh, the code for the weekly trial, or again, if you want to join for the full month, you can also do separate. Don't use the code, right? Don't confuse yourself. That's only for a week, but up to you. All right, guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Let's kill. Let's keep crushing, and yeah, just keeps making some money. All right, bye, guys.